Over the years, we've met many Tennessee craftspeople who make guitars or other stringed instruments, but none like the self-described scrapper you're about to meet. His name is Jonathan Griner, and his Lucky Box guitars put a new spin on the word repurposing. Susan Watson takes us to meet him. When John Griner picks up one of his cigar box guitars to play a tune, his fingers make contact with the strings and his soul connects with his Irish coal miner ancestors in the Appalachian Mountains. This was how they made their instruments. If they couldn't afford a, you know, $2 Martin, they just had to grab what was around them and make an instrument. <laughs> Cigar box instruments began to appear in the mid-1800s when cigar manufacturers started shipping their product in smaller wooden boxes. Resourceful folks began repurposing the boxes into guitars, fiddles, and banjos. Not surprisingly, there was a resurgence of the practice during the Great Depression. But today, musicians value these instruments for their authentic, raw, bluesy sound. John grew up in a home with parents that found merit in art and music in all of its forms. But it was his grandfather who inspired the skills he would need for crafting instruments. Art and music was definitely prevalent in my life. But my, my people, um, James Jones, he was an artist, but he was also a craftsman. Whenever I was around my people, there was always not just like artsy, crafty stuff, but for real labor-intensive artisan work. And I always wanted to, you know, experience that and, and uh, live that out in my life because of his example. John does most of the work with hand tools, painstakingly fitting joints and shaping parts. I'm proud of everything that I do. Everything that I do expresses where I once was. But what really gets me going now as far as a piece Stuff that I'm proud of, it can take anywhere from 50 on up to 70, 80 hours. The more time that's put into a piece, the better playability that you're going to get because the more accuracy that you're going to get. I mean, more love equals more love. The original cigar box guitars, they weren't meant for like super intricate playing. They were, they were just made to get your bass line rhythm and your chords down so you could sing over top of it and get some change in your jar. That's what they were. And, uh, you know, just a community thing to be able to play out some music. John searches antique shops, thrift stores, and estate sales to find the pieces that will become part of his cigar box instruments. For the most part, it's all reclaimed and recycled stuff, anywhere from old dresser tops and tables to table legs to, I mean, just, scrap fence posts. One of the pieces that I'm most proud of, I'm hand carved the neck out of tobacco sticks from Robinson County from a 200 year old tobacco farm. I do remember where every single piece that I collaged together as an instrument came from. Each and every Lucky Box guitar has its own story. One of his most unforgettable finds and now his most prized instrument came from a thrift store bargain bin. I found this sewing tin. And me doing what I do, I noticed that it was hand painted. I felt the material and I went, wow, this is old. This is from the 1800s. And when I shook it, there's stuff in there, but it was rusted shut. You couldn't open it. So I guess that's why people just passed it up. So I went in and, and dug around and I found a butter knife and some lotion and I popped it open. And lo and behold, there is a newspaper article of the rise and the fall of KKK, Abraham Lincoln, um, the military documents of General William Shook. And that was a find of what? What did you have to pay for that uh, cookie tin? Oh, that cookie tin was probably like 75 cents a dollar, something like that. It was a pretty good investment. Yeah, yeah. He fashioned the body out of a vintage silverware box that serves as a showcase for his find. The uh, tailpiece is made out of an old the insides of an old uh, toaster from the 30s that I hand cut and made my trapeze tailpiece. And then the voluting here is from a 
torn apart chair that wasn't salvageable so I used that for my bracing and then to get to the uh, military document here and it just opens up like a book mm -hmm. and then the badge here this uh, flower is actually the badge that was worn when he graduated school so this is really like the poster child for what you do this is kind of an example of what's been brewing in my mind for probably about three, four years. It turned into a beautiful piece. Yeah. While it does take some time and talent to make a Lucky Box guitar, just about anybody can play one, according to John. Truth be told, it's one of the easiest instruments to learn by ear um, because it's, it's tuned to where when you just strum it without having to hit any of the frets or markers on the neck, it's already in a chord and each one of the fret dots along the neck is your next chord. So you can just, with one finger or a slide, go through all the chords that you need for a certain song, depending on the placement, the position, and the tempo. It just takes creativity. And creativity is something that John Greiner has in spades. By searching out and repurposing other people's cast-offs, John is finding his artistic voice one lucky box guitar at a time. A lot of things that I've used and I found, um, if I didn't get a hold of them and turn them into a piece of art, they went in a, in a landfill. And I thought, well, it's a lucky box. It would have been discarded. So it's lucky to have a second chance. Mm -hmm.